find the tension in each cable supporting the 600 Newton cat burglar. Uh, so look, first off, everybody look up here. 600 Newton cat burglar. And the 600 Newtons, is this the, is this the mass of the cat burglar? No, that's the weight of the cat burglar. How do you get mass from weight? So look, what's the equation for weight or force of gravity? Mg. Mg. So if you want the mass of this guy, the mass would be the weight divided by gravity. So that's 600 Newtons. Let's just use gravity as 10. Well, actually, for the homework, you should be using 9.8. On quiz day, I'll tell you. Uh, I haven't made the quiz yet, but it'll either be 9.8 or 10. On the AP test, they want you to use 10. So let's just use 10 right here for this purpose. So this comes out. Now look, what's a Newton? A Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So what happens to the meter per second squared? The meter per second squared cancels, and you get 60 kilograms. That's the, that's the mass of the cat burglar. All right, but we're going to be using his weight. Okay, so let's solve the problem. So we're going to call this uh, rope one. This will be rope two. This will be rope three. We're finding the tension in each rope. First thing you do is a free body diagram for this point right here, because that's where the three ropes come together. So that free body diagram looks like this. So we'll call this tension one. Force in a rope is called tension. Tension one. This will be tension two. And then this is tension three. And then show your angle, dot, 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 dot. This is 37 degrees. All right, so that's step one, free body diagram. Step two, sum forces for x and y. So you always treat the x and the y separately. Okay. Oh, and by the way, what's this T3 have to be? It's got to be 600 newtons. Let me show you why real quick. If you do a free body diagram for this cat burglar, look. Here's the cat burglar. What forces are acting on the cat burglar? What's holding the cat burglar up? T3. T3. What's pulling the cat bur burglar down? His weight, which is 600. Is the cat burglar accelerating? No. So that means that T3 and the 600 have to be equal, right? So we know that T3 is 600. All right, so summing the forces in the x direction, uh, we're gonna, so you gotta do trig here. Let's show this real nicely. Same thing we did back with projectile motion. You gotta break anything that's not perfectly x or perfectly y. You gotta break it into components. So that's the x component of T1. There's the y component of T1. And then you're gonna use trig. You're gonna use trig to get those components, sine and cosine. All right, so. In the x direction, how many x forces do we have? Two. We got this guy and then T2. Those are the two x forces. So how do we get this x force? That's going to be what? Cosine 37 T1. So let's put that down here. So we got cosine 37 T1. Oh, and our sine convention, plus, minus, plus, Minus, that's the sign convention. All right, so minus T2. Why did I make T2 minus? Because it points which way? To the left. All right, so what did we do right here? We what? Summed the forces. What is the sum of the forces equal to? MA. It's always equal to MA. But is, the, is this point that we're focusing on, is it accelerating in the X direction? No, it's just sitting there, right? The point we're focusing on is just sitting there, which means the acceleration is what? Zero. So we cross that to zero. We'll just you know, erase this all, just put in a zero. But technically, it's equal to ma. All right, so we just wrote an equation. Now, let's go to the y direction. <clears throat> How many forces do we have in the y direction, looking at the free body diagram? Two. Two. We have this y component of T1, and then we have T3. So here's what this looks like. You're going to go sine 37 T1. That's the Y component for T1. Minus 600. 
equals ma in the y. All right, is there a vertical acceleration? Nope, so that goes to zero. All right, so we erase this. Technically, it's equal to ma, but the a is zero, so we just put in zero. All right, so now we can take this y equation. What's the only thing missing in there? T1. So I'll let you do the algebra. T1 works out. Oh, I'll just show it. I got time. So T1 works out to be 600 newtons over sine 37, which comes out to be 997. So T1 is 997. Okay, now come up here to this equation. What's the only thing missing in the, in the x equation? T2, because we now know what T1 is. So T2 is cosine 37 T1, and we, now, and we know that T1 is 997. So T2 is going to be cosine 37 times 997 which gives us T2 equal to 796. And those are, both of these are rounded. You know what, I shouldn't, what, what was a little, I made a little no-no here. I took the, this is rounded I think. You really shouldn't take a rounded number and plug it in somewhere else, right? Anyway, but it's physics, right? It's not chemistry. Chemistry is all about sig figs and perfection. You know, physics, as long as you show your work, like on the midterm, you're good. On the multiple choice, the answers are far enough apart where you're not going to, I'm not trying to trick you. All right, any questions on this? Okay. Okay.